Computer Science A. Unit 2, Using Objectives, in-class review. First, let's go over objects and methods. If you look right here, we have public class circle. We're writing a class that is a circle class, and it has private double radius. This would be our instance variable. It's our data field. Then we're going to have a constructor. This is our default constructor because we're not passing any parameters. If we don't tell it how big the radius is, we're going to assume that the radius of our circle is 1, our default constructor. Next, we're going to write a parameter constructor where we can set the radius. And we're going to bring it as a double because the radius is not always just an integer. So this is our parameter constructor. Next up, we have some methods. We have double calc area, which is going to return the area. And we have a perimeter, which is going to return the perimeter or the circumference of the circle. These are simply our methods. And both of these are return methods because they return values. Neither of these methods are passed any parameters because they simply use the radius that is the instance variable of the circle. Now, if we have public int max, int num1, int num2, what is all of this? Well, this first thing is our public, or is our public, is our method signature. The signature tells us what kind of a method, what data it returns, if any, the name of the method, and what parameters it's, exp it's expecting. So this is a method signature. Public is our modifier. Public, anybody can use it. Int is the return type. It's going to return an int. Max is the name of the method. And num1 and num2, those are the parameters, both the type and the name. Here, int maximum, maximum set to math.max num1 num2, system.out the print line, and then we return the maximum. This is called our method body. And the return statement, that's our return type. Moving on, what do you call constructors with parameters? Well, Parameter constructors, of course. What do you call constructors with no parameters? With no parameters, you have to just assume you know the values, and so therefore these are your default constructors. The moment that a new object is constructed is called instantiation. You have instantiated, you've created an instance of this object. One instance of a class is called an object. What type method returns a value? A non-void. A non-void returns a value. What do you call a method which does not return a value? Well, then it's a void method. What types of methods can be accessed by methods of another class? Well, those would be public, because if it's private, only your class can access it. What type methods can only be accessed by methods of the same class? Private. It's just like anything in your house, only the people who live there. It's private can access. What might you call a data member of a class? An instance variable. What keyword is required to construct an object? New, of course. You're going to create a new object, your con new construction. If a method does not return a value, the return type is void. The blank are passed to a method and should have the same number and type and order as the blank in the method signature. The arguments are passed and they should have the same number, type, and order as the parameter list. Things are passed in order. If Two methods have the same, not, same name but different parameters. The method is said to be overloaded. Now, the rest of this, you don't have any blanks to fill in, but it's there for you to review. The following string methods are con and constructors, including what they do and when they are used, are part of the Java Quick Reference in the AP exam. You'll be given a quick reference, but it's really a good idea to know this more or less to know it in your heart 
and only use this as a reference, literally as a reference, not you know what's there. So string constructs a new string object that represents the same sequence of characters as str. Int length returns the number of characters in a string object. String substring int from int to returns a substring beginning at the index from and ending at index 2 minus 1. The single element string at position index can be created by calling substring index index plus 1. String substring int from returns the substring from and then all the way to the end to the length. Index of returns the index of the first occurrence of string, returns negative 1 if it's not found. Boolean equals string other returns true if this, the calling object, is equal to the other. Otherwise, it's false. And then compare to returns a value less than 0 if this is less than other, returns 0 if it is equal to, and returns greater than, a value greater than if greater than. You don't need to know for the AP exam the exact value if it's greater or less, just that it's positive or negative. Wrapper review. The following integer methods and constructors, including what they do and when they are used, are part of the Java Quick Reference. Integer value. That constructs a new integer object that represents a, a specific int value. Integer.min value. That's the minimum value represented by an int or integer. Max value, likewise, but it's the max value. An int, int value returns the value of this integer as an int. So integer is a class, int is a primitive. The following double methods and constructors, including what they do and when they are used, are part of the Java Quick Reference. Double, double value, creates a new double object with that specified double value. Double, double value returns the value of this double as a double. A lot of double speak. Math review. You have absolute value of an integer. You have absolute value of a double, something that has decimal point. Double power. We take a value and we raise it to its exponent. So the first value is our base, the second value is our exponent. Square root returns the positive square root of a double value. You have to know if you need the negative as well. Random returns a double value greater than or equal to 0, 0.0 and less than 1.0, not including 1.0. Int math.random times range plus minimum moves the random number into a range starting from a minimum number. The range is the maximum number minus the minimum number plus one. For example, to get a number in the range of five to 10, we would use the range 10 minus five plus one is six, and the minimum number is five. Int math.random times six plus five. You need to know this. You're gonna to have to be able to pick it out and write it. And that concludes the Unit 2 Using Objects in Class Review.